Oscar De La Hoya rips IBF for stripping Terrence Crawford and elevating Boots Ennis. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So Oscar De La Hoya recently gave an interview, and he has some pretty uh, crazy things to say about the sanctioning bodies, specifically the IBF for stripping Terrence Crawford and elevating Boots Ennis. I just wanted to give my 444 nickels on what Oscar had to say for anybody listening. Obviously a long time coming. I'm glad for another reason. For anybody that know boxing, they might remember a name Aaron Pryor. But for some reason, he couldn't get those fights. And he was beat, he was demolishing everybody else around him. What's the difference between him and Boots? So I'm glad that now he has leverage to start demanding some of the, th the, the matchups that we want to look forward to. All right, y'all. So what did Oscar De La Hoya have to say about Terrence Crawford being stripped and Jerron Boots Ennis being elevated? Well, basically, he feels like that they made a bad decision. He feels like that Terrence Crawford in the situation that he's in with Earl Spence Jr. and the rematch contract that Terrence Crawford doesn't have a choice but to give Earl Spence a rematch and he shouldn't have been stripped for that fact. They should have taken that into account. Oh Jesus. She go. She go. But the problem is that Earl Spence was champion for so long and that he didn't never defend the IBF title. Now, he defended, I believe, all the titles, you know, you could say when he fought Ordanius Ugas, but he didn't actually take on that mandatory defense, which was Jerron Boots Ennis. So I think the sanctioning bodies felt like because of the rules, these are their own rules, so much time had elapsed that they couldn't really hold boots back anymore. Where I am at in my career right now, and I deserve to do whatever the fuck I want to do. And since they couldn't force the Terrence Crawford fight, and they knew they couldn't force the Terrence Crawford fight, they just did what they felt like was right by boots. Now, I, I can't hate anybody for doing what's right. You know, I, I we all want boxing to do what's right for the sport and what's right for the fighters not what's right for a specific superstar, but what's right for everybody as a whole. And we normally don't get that in boxing. We normally don't get that with the decisions. I mean, look at the Tyson Fury and Galwa situation. Uh, look at plenty of other fights. You know, the, the Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn situation. In a lot of these fights, we don't get the decisions that we want. and They're not normally based off what's right for the fighters. They're normally based off what's right for a specific company or for, you know, a specific sanctioning body to get what they want out of a specific company. So when they do right by a fighter like Jerron Boots Ennis, then you got to be happy for Boots. Yeah! You know, yes, it's kind of unfair to Terrence Crawford, even though I'm not a Terrence Crawford fan. I will say that the decision they made is slightly unfair to Terrence Crawford. But what about Boots in the situation? You know, what's unfair for Boots? You know, Boots has been waiting pretty much like three years as a mandatory to get just one title shot. And he couldn't get it out of the WBO because I, apparently he's not number one in the WBO. He couldn't get it out of the WBC because apparently he's not number one in the WBC. He couldn't get it out of the WBA. So he did what he had to do with the title that was in front of him, with the title shot that was in front of him, the IBF. He kept he kept sending in requests for his mandatory defense, and eventually they had to answer the request. And they did what they had to do. They did what they could do. They could not force a fight, so they stripped Terrence Crawford of his title. <laughs> He is not ass now, Terrence Crawford still has options. He's obviously going to be the number one guy for that title. You know, he's going to be the mandatory for Jerron Boots' IBF title at this point because he actually didn't lose 
the title. He's so he's going to be number one in the IBF. So it, it's not like he doesn't have an opportunity to get that belt back. The problem is he still has to wait until the Earl Spence situation is over with before he can actually get that belt back. Now, here's the crazy part, you know, about the whole situation and everybody kind of complaining about Terrence Crawford being stripped. Terrence Crawford was going to drop those titles anyway. <laughs> He's just sitting around holding these titles hostage because he can and because it gives him negotiating power. Your mama's still working in them $10 houses? So I think the IBF did the right thing. You know, why am I going to allow you to hold our belt hostage when you're not even planning on defending it in the first place? If you're not planning on defending it, basically you're wasting everybody's time in the top five because those guys could be fighting it out for an opportunity to fight boots. So if you're just going to move on and all you want is a, a huge Jamel Charlo paycheck or a huge Canelo Alvarez paycheck and you're just planning on holding these titles because it gives you better leverage with Canelo Alvarez, well, the sanctioning bodies actually did the right thing in moving you out of the way. Go get away with it. Not up in here. Not up in here. And allowing someone else to come in who's actually going to fight and defend that title. If you're not going to do anything but use it as a trinket to make you more money, you don't deserve to have it in the first place. So they did the right thing by moving Terrence Crawford out of the way. And in all honesty, they were probably going to do the same thing to Earl Spence if he beat Terrence Crawford in the undisputed fight. You see, well, to some people they might see this tacky, but there's a message in these shoes, you see. Uh, these shoes keep me humble. If uh, you recall last time that we met, I had these shoes that weren't in that bad of a shape, you know. But these shoes were handed down through my family. My father wore them, my brothers wore them, and things like that. So they keep me humble, keep me and let me remember that I have a brother and sisters back in Chicago not doing to where I got mother and father that I must take care of. So you see, out in Hollywood, especially all the money that I'm making now, it's so easy for me to get caught up in all these material stuff and forget where I'm coming from. So wherever I'm be, whether I'm with a governor or a mayor or a reception or whatever, I look down at my shoes and let me know, hey, I can't get too carried away here. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all that down in the comment section below. With that like button for me. Share, share, share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. But you're more than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there. If you want to collab, feature a product or your channel on my channel, feel free to hit my Gmail because it is a flock of cards at gmail dot com. We are Set the city on fire. Chicks wanna give me time like a dope char. KY Mozart, money like a loan shark. OJ in the cup, rolling like a go car. Okay, throw it like you try and get paid. Then throw it like you try and get a raise. Hey, it on me, don't be trying it today. Eyes metal on your head like you try and get a fade. See, I'm old with some real loop of billions. Buy money like we had a deal with Cecilia. I said, I'ma come do when the old school buck. Show up in the back, lights and play, say Kentucky. Louisville slugger, knock it out the park. See them young players on the grind at the dark. What's up? Louisville slugger, swing for the fence. In the old school thing with the tents getting bent. In my old two bang, fingerprints getting rinsed. Got a old school dame and the lips got a grip. Send my whole Bang, hit the strip, throw the grip, hitting pro tools, bang, real hits, bad as hell, bad as hell. Okay, there's nothing you can tell me. Since I got a mouth full of Notre Dame helmets, girls say I'm selfish, players think I'm wealthy, so I prove them both right. Player, get your flow tight, you should let me go right, imitate my whole life. Louis Keys, so tight, I know. I said, right. I'ma come do in the old school bucket. Show up in the back, lights and play, say Kentucky. Louisville Slugger, knock it out the park. See them young players on the grind at the door. I said, I'ma come do in the old school bucket. Show up in the back, lights and play, say Kentucky. Louisville Slugger, knock it out the park. See them young players on the grind at the door.
What's up? It would be a slug gun. It is what it is. Don't talk about my crew and gang being where I live. They love me in the hood cause I've been spitting pain. They love me in the hood since I did switch the lanes. I knock it out the picture frame when I entertain. I never been the lane, then I let me in the game. Okay, I put it on my back. You'll be a KY finna put it on the map. I said, I'ma come through with no school bus.